Should trans women be included in feminist conversations? How about in women's spaces? Yes, they're women. What's the question? Pearl, I trans see women are women. So that was a brief clip from a discussion from a Vice documentary that was conducted between pro-feminists and anti-feminists. And you heard the girl ask the question, should trans women be allowed in women's sports? And that one woman down in the wheelchair piped up and said, yes, what's the question? Trans women are women. And if you noticed, to the far right of that, the dude with the short, short hair seemed to be <clears throat> on board with it, if you will. And I'm going to explain who that is in a little while. But this conversation still goes on day in and day out. Should men who say they're women be allowed to participate in women's sports? My answer is no, because I believe they have a biological advantage over the females. But there was a girl on the panel who is against it. She says she was a semi-pro athlete in basketball and volleyball, and she had something to say about it. So have a look at this clip. And then we're going to talk about the dude with the short hair. So I, I want to come at this from the um, position of an athlete. Oh, Jesus. Um, so, so I play semi-pro basketball, semi-pro volleyball. So when it comes to like athletic spaces, I don't think that trans women should be allowed into athletic spaces because I don't think it's a fair... Um, I think we, as a female athletes, we work so incredibly hard for the little opportunity there is in women's sports. Would this be a like, barrier for like this, There's no barrier. There's less opportunity in some industries. That's, That's what a barrier is. There's less... It's not, no, no, no. It's That's based on the market. Me. Okay, hold it's on, hold on, on guys. Based... Eli, I want to give you the chance to respond. Um, so this is basically a joke of a talking point. Everyone has biological advantages in sports. How, how tall are you? Uh, five eleven and a half. I'm yeah, tall. I'm I'm five foot eight. Mm -hmm. I am a trans woman. I you would crush me. You would absolutely yeah. crush bone me. density, wrist strength, yeah. muscle density. You can't switch those. Yeah, exactly. You would crush me. But also, Eli, you would never play at the level that Pearl plays because um, you would never get there. So let me give you a few more examples here, too. So Michael Phelps produced more lactic acid in his body, which caused him to swim better than any of his competitors. This was widely celebrated and nobody contested it. Now, just, this is a performance enhancing hormone. So we all have different bodies. And now I'm not saying that trans women who aren't on hormones should participate, but there are, I mean, every major medical and every major sports organization agrees that trans women who have been on hormones for between one and three years, depending on the organization, have the same competitive abilities. That's okay, first I like the part where the lady on the far end with the long hair stood up for the girl that was speaking about female athletes and that men would have an, an advantage over them. But then Eli had to pipe up. That's Eli Ehrlich. I spoke about Eli Ehrlich a while back in another video, and he just happened to pop up in this Vice documentary. So basically, that's really why I want to talk about this. Eli says that the girl next to him would have an advantage over him because she's a biological female, and she's bigger than him, which she is bigger than him. But that didn't make any sense because Eli is a dude, although he says he's not. But then he went on to say something that really, I, I don't understand what he meant by it. Because Michael Phelps, we all know who Michael Phelps is. Okay, the how many gold medals he won, swimmer, blah, blah, blah. But Eli said that Michael Phelps produced more lactic acid in his body than any other swimmer, that's what gave him an advantage over the other swimmers. And no one complained about it because she said, he said, it's a performance-enhancing hormone. Right. His body is producing that hormone because he is a male and... Oh my God, he was competing against other males, okay? He didn't pretend he was Leah Thomas and swim with females and win a national title, no. So what does it matter if Michael Phelps produced more lactic acid? He wasn't using performance-enhancing drugs. 
it was his own chemistry that caused this. And okay, it caused him to swim faster, so he kept winning. How is that even an issue in this conversation? But then Eli says that medical doctors from studies and blah, 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 if a man is on hormones for three years, they're at the same level as a female. Absolutely not. It's 100%, in my opinion, ridiculous, okay? It's absolutely ridiculous. You are a biological male. Your body chemistry is completely different. I don't care what kind of hormones you're taking. So I'll bring up Leah Thomas again. Leah Thomas is William Thomas. William was a horrible swimmer, but he wanted to be somebody. So all of a sudden he was a girl. He went on hormones and was allowed to swim on the women's team and then he won a national title. Unfair advantage because William is a dude and he swam against biological females, okay? So that conversation should be moot because Eli is a fucking nitwit, okay? Eli says he's a researcher, you're nothing. You're, you're, you're a nitwit as far as I'm concerned. But I'm going to go a little further now with Eli. Eli Ehrlich was a strong promoter of hormone therapy for kids, if you will. And at one point a while back, Eli put up an Instagram post basically saying, I have access to all of these hormones and I'm willing to send them to kids teenagers, anywhere in the country, free of charge, if you don't have access to them. So Eli, again, was willing to send all different gender-affirming hormones through the mail for free, and nothing was done about it. He was not approached, as far as I know, by any law enforcement authority to question him, why are you doing this? And how how can you even think that it's legal? Yeah, the prescriptions were written by a doctor, but they were not written so someone like him could mail them all over the country to kids who don't have access to them. He has no idea what would have happened if any child, kid, teenager, got a hold of these medications, and started taking them. But he also said that along with the pills came instructions on dosages. So all of a sudden, Eli's a doctor too, but no one did anything about it. He's on this panel of feminist versus pro-feminist, anti-feminist. He shouldn't be doing anything. He shouldn't be speaking. What he was doing was basically saying, I want to be a drug trafficker, and I'm going to give it to you for free. I don't even want any money because I want all you kids to take all these pills that I'm taking because I'm a woman. It's absolute insanity. And why, again, did not one official, I, I hate to call them officials in the Biden administration because they're all, most of them are all brain dead, but they did nothing. I'm pretty sure that someone in that administration saw this and did nothing about it. They left him alone. They let. They still let this kid preach his bullshit. He wants to poison young children with hormones that will ruin them for the rest of their lives. But he's going to sit on a panel and discuss why trans women should be allowed in biological women's sports. This is the lunacy that we face in this country. They, they, these people love this. They love it. They like getting their name and their face out there, basically, so we can see how ridiculous they are. I, for one, <clears throat> as a parent, if, God forbid, someone ever 
ever gave one of my children when they were kids any kind of hormone replacement drugs, that person would, chances are, I'm not going to say what I want to say, but I would certainly, certainly have the authorities investigate it, and hopefully that person would be held accountable for trying to poison kids with prescriptions not written for them, okay? But they allow it. The President of the United States allows it. His DEA and FBI and DOJ allow it. All they're concerned about is going after people who don't agree with what Joe Biden says. All his IRS agents want to do is go after people who made a $600 transaction on their Venmo or their PayPal account. They don't care that these activists are trying to poison children with gender-affirming hormones because this is what they're all about. These people, once they turn 18, this is their voting base. So this is why we keep seeing it. And the more they get their message out, they believe the more people they'll get on board their movement. It's the same like it's the same as BLM when that started. That was the biggest movement going. Black Lives Matter. We're gonna raise millions of dollars. We're gonna take care of everybody. They took care of nobody but themselves, and they all belong in prison. Hopefully they will be soon. But this community is the same thing. They're trying to reel these kids in because we know you're really not a boy. We know you want to be a girl. Take this and you'll feel better. And then when they're older and they can't do anything about it to reverse it, what's going to happen? Their lives are over. They ruin them. But that's what Eli is all about, ruining lives. And I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why they allow it. I don't know how physicians with any ethics at all could promote this or could want to give a child gender-affirming hormones to basically stop their body from doing what it's doing and change it. Puberty blockers, okay? Why do they get away with it? And why is everybody so silent about it? I talk about it a lot, and I know a lot of people. I follow a lot of people on YouTube, big conservative talk shows that preach this stuff. They're against it. But we're all the bad people. We're trying to get our message out to stop this nonsense, save these children from the poison that they're trying to give them. But they keep doing it because we're the bad ones. We're the transphobes. We're the anti-LGBTQ. No, we're not. We don't care what you people do. Leave the kids alone. When they're old enough to decide, they'll decide. Stop teaching it in schools. Stop putting the books in the libraries. That's it. Leave, <clears throat> excuse me, leave the kids alone. Let them decide when they're adults if they want to change their gender, then they can have a ball. But as young children, just trying to make it, just trying to learn and make friends and be a kid, these so-called activists like Eli are trying to destroy people's lives. And it needs to end. Someone has to stop this. We see it all too much. We see it in schools in the hospitals have special units dedicated to this. What are we doing? Where are we going as a society and as a country if we're trying to destroy people's lives? These politicians have zero morals. And my guess is the more they push this, the more money they make from the pharmaceutical companies that are producing these hormones. It needs to end. It really does because people, they're hurt, <clears throat> excuse me again, they're hurting people by allowing it, by allowing people like Eli 
to want to send drugs through the mail and then sit on a panel and say, Michael Phelps produced more lactic acid and no one cared? Of course no one cared. He's a man and he was swimming against men. I don't understand your point, Eli. This shit needs to stop. And that's it. And that's my opinion. If you haven't already liked this video, please hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel and tap that notification bell. Share my videos with someone if you will. I really appreciate that. I hope everybody's healthy and safe. And I'll see you real soon with something else. Have a great day.